Awesome. How's everybody doing today? Awesome. Very good. Good afternoon. I almost said good morning and then I caught myself, but now I'm going to say it anyways, so I ruined catching myself. I'd like to thank you all for having me up here to Grand Rapids, so I missed the hurricane headed toward my house right now. <laughs> thank you. My wife and kids, thank you, because, I don't know, they got to go hang out at Friends. Um, Matthew, horrible name for a hurricane. It's a horrible name. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're going to talk about a number of things today, and uh, I'm going to kind of, I'm trying to only wander where the camera can see me, um, because I always hate watching videos later, and the presenter is like way over there, and you don't see them, but I'm probably going to end up doing that because I move around. Today's talk is a little weird, but of course, you knew that because I'm on stage. I'm Kevin. I'm not super excited about being Kevin. I've been Kevin for 43 years. I've been Kevin Johnson for 35 of the 43. Uh, yeah, I changed my name when I turned 18. It was lots of fun. Uh, I recommend it to everybody. Uh, if you ever want to get really uncomfortable questions uh, from your bank or other random places that you have to show ID, uh, change your name without getting married at the same time. Because the system is designed around, oh, you got married, there's a license or something, and uh, the system doesn't work well. You get asked questions like, my, my favorite one, and of course this was years ago, so I don't know what brought it up in my head right now, but it did. Um, uh, my favorite question I think was where the bank teller asked me if I was hiding from the mafia. And I looked at him like, are you an idiot? Because like, if I am, why would I tell you? Right? I mean, just, it was, it was nuts, but you know, just random things. So I'm Kevin Johnson. I am the founder and CEO of Secure Ideas, which is exciting to me. Uh, we are a consulting firm out of Jacksonville, Florida. We have people in Salt Lake, Tulsa, Charlotte, uh, and obviously Jacksonville. We also have two open recs right now for uh, security consultants, if anybody's looking for a job. Uh, we would like at least one of those recs to be filled in Jacksonville. Uh, so if you want, okay, moving, let us know. We have a form on our website. Here's a recommendation. Do not send a Word doc or PDF to me via email. It's kind of like the first step of testing. If you send me a PDF, you fail. Because um, we send PDFs as part of our pen testing. And if you wanted to be a security consultant, you probably should know that, right? It's just one of those things I, I think of. Uh, I'm also an IANS faculty member. IANS is a pretty cool organization, but I'm biased because I'm a faculty member. Uh, we do decision support, all that kind of cool stuff. I'm an author and a cor of courses. Uh, I speak and teach. I am an international speaker because I've been to Australia once. Um, I've also been to Canada a few times, but that doesn't count, right? That's 51st state, America's hat. Uh, <laughs> just one of those things, right? Uh, but I, when I went to Australia once and I got to teach a class there, so I'm an international uh, speaker and teacher, it's kind of like the Jacksonville International Airport. Uh, the Jacksonville Airport is an international airport. It has one flight to the Bahamas every week. So I made that joke in Jacksonville once, and this guy, like, you would have thought I peed on him. He was so upset. He was like, what? We are an international airport. I'm like, really? He's like, yes. I'm like, I, I know it's in the name, but where's customs? And Atlanta isn't the right answer, <laughs> right? Because when you fly internationally out of Jacksonville, you literally show your passport to the gate agent and fly to Atlanta and go through customs. <laughs> like, that's not an international, never mind. But, uh, so I'm an open source project lead. I am also, and it's one of the things I am proudest of. Please note, I said one of the other things I'm proud of are Brenna and Sarah, uh, even though I really had no say in how they get raised because they're awesome and my wife is awesome. But uh, I am a member of the 501st. For the people who don't know, uh, my wife says it's the nerdiest thing I've ever done. I told her she met me when I was 26, so she doesn't know. Uh, <laughs> So we are an organization where worldwide we have about 10,000 members. And what we do is we dress up in screen accurate Star Wars costumes and we raise money for charity. So uh, last year, I think the number was $110 million worldwide indirectly was raised. Uh, so I get to go visit kids in the hospital. And uh, tomorrow I was supposed to be doing a 5K 
Notice I did not say running a 5K. I said doing a 5K for breast cancer uh, research. Uh, and I'm currently raising money for rheumatoid arthritis. arthritis. Uh, and I will be doing those 5Ks in a full Vader suit. Uh, helmet, voice box, cape, lightsaber, boots. Uh, it'll be awesome. <laughs> so, uh, and, and you also notice I am a father, husband, and a Christian. And I think that those three are very important. Uh, my children are one of the reasons I'm up here, right? Because uh, we have to make things better. And you're about to get a little bit of a rant. Uh, maybe, kind of. Right? Uh, I also want to let, just let you know I am full of tangents. I will try to make my tangents relevant to the talk. I'm full of lots of things and my eyes are brown. So you can take that however you want to. Uh, I also want to warn you that I have a sense of humor. I was very clear there. I did not say a good sense of humor. My current favorite joke. Do you know why Walmart wasn't hacked? They're not a target. But, <laughs> right? I like that joke. I actually got to introduce the CISO of Walmart at an event, and I told that joke. He wouldn't shake my hand. <laughs> but, you know, like, you know, the, 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 the master of ceremonies introduce you, and they hold out their hand, and the dude went and walked around me. Like, I said you weren't hacked. <laughs> it's like, come on, the other company named themselves after something people shoot at. <laughs> they were just asking for it. It's kind of like, you ever think about that with company names? I know, tangent, right? Good technology. How many people here have used good technology before? How many people here should have thought they should have named themselves mediocre technology? Right, but that's what, like if you were marketing, wouldn't you have said best or better? No, we're just kind of good. We kind of solved, I don't know, whatever. But, so, <laughs> I do a lot of different things. We're going to talk a little bit today about Back to the Future. If you've ever heard me speak before or you ever look online, you'll notice that I always tend to try to grab movie titles. Uh, you would think that I watched a lot of movies. I don't. I don't know why I do it, but it works, right? And the idea here is we, we, this group, are living in some of the best times ever. It's the best of times, but it's the worst of times. Ah, two cities. Uh, but I paid attention in high school. We are in some of the best times ever. I think back. I'm an old fart. I'm a fat, lazy old man, right? And I remember back to my first 2400 baud modem, which was an upgrade, <laughs> right? And, and you heard the squeal, and you got connected, and you wanted to download something, and you went and got dinner. Went to school, took a nap, came back. Z modem came out. It was awesome, right? I see, so <laughs> like, yeah, right? And I look at what we've got now. I just had a doof come to my office. He's a Comcast sales guy. And uh, he wants to sell us 10 gigabit connections to the office. 10 gigabits. Like, what? That's possible? Right, like this is what we're living in. We're living in a time where our refrigerator is able to tell us if we're out of milk. We live in the future. I mean, seriously, I have a 3D printer, and I know that 3D printers are old now, which that in of itself is mind-boggling. We're in an era where you can say to people, I'm a hacker, and not be arrested. Right? We can openly talk about what we do. My job, what I do on a daily basis, is break into companies, steal shit, and leave. That's awesome. And they pay me. Right? The problem is that all of this awesomeness is also counting against us. And I talk about this quite often. And I think that we, as an industry, need to really think about where we're going and what we're doing. And, I, and I, I, a good example of this, which is not in my slides, um, is the Yahoo breach. Right? How many people here still use Yahoo? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> but fancy fo well, fantasy football, so D&D &D for people who don't really understand fantasy and 
football. So, okay. Uh, but, um, sorry. <laughs> Look, I'm the guy that didn't know the Jaguars was a football team when I moved to Jacksonville. So, I, of course, when I moved to Jacksonville, I found out nobody else knew they were a football team either. But um, when we look at the Yahoo breach, right, the security team there, Chris Gonzalez of Ions has talked a lot about this, and he's right. The security team there was known as the Paranoids. They were proud of that title. They were proud of the fact that management looked at them as paranoid, crazy people and never really thought about the fact that that meant you're the paranoid person we can disregard, right? I talked last year when I was here speaking, and it's something that drives me quite a bit. I have a 14-year-old daughter, Brenna, right? And Brenna has a seizure disorder and OCD. And when she was nine years old, she was diagnosed with that. And thank God, she'll outgrow the seizure disorder with no long-lasting effects. And OCD is something she'll learn to live with because I have right? But about six months after she was diagnosed, Wolfson's Children's Hospital had a breach because they didn't do security right. They took it seriously. And all of her data was stolen. Her social, her date of birth, her address, enough information that you can become my daughter in our systems. And at nine years old, I got to explain to my daughter what that meant. At nine years old, I got to explain to my daughter what it meant that for the rest of her life, she was going to have to watch her back. She was going to have to live her life with the idea that other people could be her. And I had to explain it was because people didn't do something right. And we need to fix that. We need to think about where we're going, right? How do we know we're going the right way? And one of the things that I look at quite strongly is that we need to understand where we come from. Because I will tell you, I, I just, I was, two days I was in Philadelphia, and I was presenting at the IONS Forum, and I'm talking to people, and I had a number of people come up to me and say something along the lines of, Kevin, you, you are so smart. I fooled them. <laughs> you know so much, man. The stuff you do is cool. And I, it, I try to get across to them, and the sad part is, it sounds like you're fishing for compliments when you say it, but the reality is, I know nothing. I am only capable of doing the things that I do because smarter people came before me. I am only able to do the things I do because somebody else broke that path. And I have to keep that in mind for a couple reasons. One, because we get to do some really fun shit, but we only get to do it because somebody else helped us. But I also have to constantly keep in mind that while I'm standing on the shoulder of giants, there's somebody else who's going to stand on this midget's shoulders. Somebody else is going to come after her, and that's where the picture comes from, right? That's actually my daughter. She got to present out in Denver with me. We did a talk together. I taught her how to analyze mobile traffic, and she pulled down all the mobile apps that were the popular top 10 for Android and iOS for kids, and she analyzed them for privacy concerns. And it was one of the proudest moments of my life to see my daughter on stage with me presenting, and she actually presented. It, it, like it was, oh my gosh, that's Bren, right? Monkey face made it big. She loves that I call her that, maybe not. It's better than Squarehead, which is what I call her sister. The hacker idea really started here in MIT, right? Their model train group. These people built model trains. They built different systems, and they figured out how to hack the system, how to make it work slightly better, right? And that, to me, is what we do. This is what we're trying to be, right? We're not anonymous. We're not the jester. We're not Snowden, the traitor. Ooh, did I say that out loud? <laughs> Good. He should be put under the jail. But it's an option, right? <laughs> we are building stuff, not breaking stuff. And that's an important thing to keep in mind. Me as a pen tester, right? My main job is to break stuff. 
But the reality is, is we're trying to build it. We're trying to make it work better, right? And I like this. You know, access to computers and anything that might teach you something about the way the world works should be unlimited in total. Always yield to the hands-on imperative. And this, I think, is a great quote, even though I'm not a Bernie Sanders supporter. This is something we have to think about. We should be able to do what we need to do to test stuff, right? With limits. That's the one place I don't agree here. This is unlimited, which implies that you should be allowed to test whatever you want, wherever you want, whenever you want. And the reality is you can't. We're too interconnected of a system today for you to just go out and hack stuff. And we'll talk about bug bounties in a second, right? And things like that. But what we have to do is we have to figure out, we as an industry have to determine what is the mechanism that we can enable to grow our skills, to grow the technology, grow the techniques, grow our abilities. And that hour is our, everybody's. I feel very firmly that one of our key directives should be the education of everybody else. As a business owner, as somebody who runs a security consulting firm, I jokingly tell people that my business goal is to be protested by the Occupy movement. I want to be so successful, there is an Occupy elderberry court. Pup tents in my cul-de-sac, right? And I walk outside, they'd be able to yell, yo, trillionaire, we hate you, right? That's my joking business goal. It's not a bad business goal, I don't think, right? Trillionaire, that sounds good. The reality, though, is my business goal is to go out of business. If Secure Ideas does its professionally evil mission well enough, you won't need us, right? We'll show you how to do what we do so that we can continue to do better stuff and you can do better stuff. That's why we give away free training to first responders and veterans, right? It's why every chance we get, we try to teach. We try to show how to do it. And everybody else should be doing that too. And conferences like this are exactly where we see that. Where people like Atlas can stand up and talk about hacking stuff and show people what he knows. He's way the hell smarter than I am. The other people around at the show can sit up and talk about things. I just sat in a room and, and I apologize. I can't remember the guy's name. And he stood up and he said, Magnetic Cards 101. And I'm like, huh, I'll go see this, because Atlas knew the guy. He's like, let's go talk to it. I, I honestly sat down in that room thinking to myself, magnetic stripe cards. Psh, what is he going to teach me about that? Within the first 30 seconds, I had learned three things I didn't know. It was incredible. And that's what it always should be. Every time you look at something, right? You should be sharing it with other people. You should be teaching other things. The problem, though, is that we have things like the movies, right? <clears throat> they show people this. How many people liked War Games? Of course we did. It was awesome, right? It was ridiculous. Uh, yeah, if you're going to rate ridiculousness, I think War Games was kind of below the other ones, like, uh, I don't know, sneakers? I don't have a bread truck. <laughs> I want a bread truck. This is a good movie, too. I liked it. How many people here hack in rollerblades? Of course we do. Right? This is the image we give people. I have said on planes, I'm on planes a lot. I fly a lot. Delta likes me, right? I also have problems on planes. I was peed on by a person on a plane. It's awful, right? But I have literally sat down on planes next to people who had their legs and had them say to me, what do you do? Because for some reason, this face says, talk to me. <laughs> Don't know why. 
And I thought, well, you know, I, I'm a security consultant. Really? You're like a bodyguard? <laughs> Me? I'm a fat guy. The only way I'm going to be a bodyguard is if I land on somebody, right? <laughs> no, I'm not a bodyguard. What do you do? I do penetration testing. <laughs> yep, that's exactly the reaction, right? Do you do that for the porn industry? No! <laughs> What do you penetrate? I had somebody say to me once, is that, uh, I was going to Houston, right? So I guess it relevant. And the guy's like, oh, so you do testing for the oil organizations. And without even thinking about it, I'm like, yeah. Right, because in my head, I do, <laughs> right? And, he, and they're like, really, so, like, do you use dynamite? I'm thinking, I could. <laughs> Not sure how much data I get off the system then, right? Hey, I hacked your website. <laughs> How'd you deface us? We blew it up. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I don't use that. Oh, oh, you, oh, I got it. So I said to the guy, no, 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 penetration testing. We are ethical hackers. We, you know, we, I, the way I normally explain it is, my job is to break into companies, steal stuff, and then show them how I did it so they could fix the problem. That's the, that's the elevator speech, right? The boom, 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 that's what I do. And then I always get the, one I get the, not talking to me for the rest of the flight. It's awesome. <laughs> All right? Like, oh, you're a hacker. <laughs> Moving away. But then I get the person like, oh, you hack, you steal stuff? Could you get into my ex's Facebook account? Probably, but no. It's actually not your ex's Facebook account. It's me pretending to be your ex, but <laughs> so, right? But people get these ideas, and then I have people ask me questions about the movie Hackers. This is the movie people think of. They're like, oh, Angelina Jolie help you? No, wish. <laughs> is that an option? <laughs> Right? No, we don't have weird hair and all this kind of stuff. I'm sorry? You gotta bring Joel Cola. Don't bring Joel Cola back. Please don't do that. Do you know how expensive pen tests would be if we had to hire Angelina Jolie to help us with them? I mean, I don't know what her day rate is, but it's probably higher than mine. <laughs> Just a guess. That's it. We need to hire Angelina Jolie lookalikes. That's it, right? Done. <laughs> but we have to start thinking about this because one of the questions we have to ask ourselves is this, right? What color hat are we? By the way, I don't wear hats. <laughs> I just don't. We give away professional evil hats at conferences. I don't have any with me. I'm sorry. No, I just realized as I said it, I'm at a conference and I don't have any with me. Um, the, and I, I hate them because they're hats. <laughs> I just don't wear hats, right? We asked, right, like how many people here have talked about this? Like, are you a white hat? Are you a gray hat? Are you a black hat? I'm a brown hair. Does that count? And, and it's funny, like where do we fit? I don't know. Like I, I don't think I'm a white hat. Because in my head, white hat is owned by Jeremiah Grossman. I mean, it's not anymore, <laughs> but it was, right? But I'm not, I don't think I'm a white hat because I have done things in my life that maybe weren't necessarily the right thing to do, right? I had a person ask me once, I was teaching a class and the guy's like, so are you telling me you would never ever break the law? My answer is I speed, I drive too fast. So no, I can't tell you I'd never break the law. No, 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 Kevin, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. No, I can't tell you I would never break the law. I can't tell you I would never do anything with hacking that is illegal. Why? Because I have two daughters. And I will tell you right now that when Brennan and Sarah get to the age where they may decide to date, I'm going to fuck some people up. <laughs> I, I, I know it. I told my wife when, when, we, when she was pregnant with Brennan, I said to her, we are going to make this kid. Boy, girl, don't care. We didn't know at the time, right? I don't care what they are. We were going to make them as nerdy as possible. And she's like, really? Why? What is this plan? And I'm like, well, I want them to be as nerdy as possible so when they start to date, whoever they date 
will understand why they should be afraid of me. Right? Like they, they come into the house, right? Whoever that person is, I can just say to them, wow, I'm really sorry, you failed math. And they'll be like, I didn't fail. You did. <laughs> Curfew's eight. <laughs> right? Just uh, throw these things out there a little bit, right? But yeah, like I'm not a white hat. I'm not a black hat, right? I don't just go hack shit because I can. Okay, so does that make me a gray hat? Well, that just sounds stupid. Right? I don't know. So, you know, it's one of those things, but we start looking at, you know, we see it in the news. They ask the question. I've decided, and I want to be very clear that I did not come up with this. Uh, Jason Gillum, one of my guys, put this in a slide, and I looked at it and went, oh my God, that's perfect. We need to stop worrying about hats. And by the way, it's absolutely perfect with the fantasy football thing, because this is what we should use. Right? We would understand what this is. I'm a chaotic neutral. Right? Done. That's what I am. <laughs> That's where I fit. Yeah, exactly. Right? Every, like, it makes sense. You don't argue about this. Okay? We could, we could name any hacker, any public figure, and we know where they fit on this, at least in our opinion. Right? This would work. Now, it may not be as widespread an understanding as I would hope, but I think it would make sense. But we need to think about this because we have this new title that's out there. And I hope you see the quotes. <laughs> Security researcher. I have a pet peeve against this thing. I hate this title more than I hate the title security evangelist. Right? You heard the title security evangelist, right? You want to know a fun question to ask anybody who has that title? Where's the security martyr? Right? Because if evangelism implies a religion, most religions have some idea of martyrship. Right? So if you're an evangelist, who's your martyr? I, they don't like that question. It's kind of like when you talk to the ghost hunter people. You know those, you know those TV shows, right? We just had this conversation. You know those TV shows, right? The We Hunt Ghosts? I get a kick out of those TV shows. Now here's my question. Total tangent. Sorry, guys. But here's my question. The shows always start out with, we have never proven the existence of ghosts, right? I'm not arguing ghosts exist, don't exist. I don't care, not arguing. They say they've never proven the existence of ghosts. So if they've never scientifically proven the existence of ghosts, how do they calibrate their equipment? Right? Like my EKG MRI infrared device is at 12. Okay. I don't know what that means. But security researchers, we got all these people out there, right? Security researcher arrested for disclosing U.S. election website vulnerabilities. That was a fun one, right? The doof found SQL injection flaws, and he reported them. Now, I want to be clear. I don't have a problem with somebody going, oh, shit, that's bad, and telling somebody. But do you know who he reported it to? The candidate for the election commissioner that was running against the current election commissioner. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? No politics there. That's like going to Trump and telling him Hillary's website has vulnerabilities. You were not trying to accomplish good for Hillary at that time. Or any, well, yeah, we won't go there, right? <laughs> go Hillary Trump. But uh, that's who I'm voting for, both of them. Vote more uh, often. But, <laughs> so this guy found a flaw. And we can look at it and go, wow, that's kind of cool. You found this flaw. You, you found something that could cause problems. You know uh, uh, that, that this is bad. <clears throat> so you let somebody know. The problem is, instead of going and letting somebody know who could actually fix it, he went to the opponent and said, look at the problem over there. So what happened? It became a political thing. What happened? The dude got arrested. Personally, I think he should have been arrested. Because he didn't just find a SQL injection flaw. How many people here know how to find SQL injection? Right? Single quote. You get an error message back. That sucks. I know it's a little bit more than that, but just go with it, right? The dude didn't stop there. 
He then did single quote or one equals one semicolon dash dash. And he dumped the entire database to prove the existence. It doesn't prove the existence. It proves you're an asshole. You stole personal data for voters. And I know, I've heard the argument. Well, somebody from Russia could have done the same thing. Yes, somebody from Russia could have killed that guy too. It doesn't make it okay that you did it first. This is a problem. And we give it a title of researcher like they're scientists in fucking lab coats. Right? I always ask people who tell me they're a security researcher. And there are security researchers. I want to be very clear. There are people who I look at and go, that person is using a scientific method and researching new vulnerabilities. Finding cross-site scripting on Yahoo is not research. What was your hypothesis? I hypothesize. I don't know if that's how you say that, but let's go with it, right? I hypothesize there is cross-site scripting. Duh! It's cross-site scripting. Of course there is. I'm vulnerable to cross-site scripting. I don't mean my website, I mean me. <laughs> it's that widespread. And then we have this idea of bug bounties. And I want to be very clear, because a lot of people go away from my talk saying, Kevin hates bug bounties. I don't. I think if you have a robust security structure, and you're actually fixing shit, a bug bounty is a good path for you. I also think if you're somebody who wants to get into the field, who wants to become a security person, who wants to get experience, bug bounties are a good idea for you. They weren't for these two morons. So first, the hello Snapchat. This jackass figured out the password for this one organization's uh, Snapchat uh, Tumblr account. Yeah, that's it. They got Snapchat's Tumblr account. It's kind of like when you tweet somebody to tell you to like them on Facebook so they can see your Instagram posts, I guess. But I don't get social media. This Snapchat has a bug bounty. Just to be clear, Tumblr is not in scope for the bug bounty. So the person got the password to Snapchat's Tumblr account and posted this. Dear Snapchat, please check your HackerOne account for information on this exploit. I want to be very clear. <clears throat> Not an exploit. This is called logging in. That's right. How did you get in? I typed the password. You, sir, are a dickhead. Right? Like, what did this prove? They had a weak password? No shit. They're Snapchat. I don't know anything about Snapchat, except supposedly it's a way to show naked parts to other people. That's what I've heard. <laughs> You're nodding. That should worry me. <laughs> so, then there's this other guy, right? And this one gets me mad. I'm an Uber user. And I don't mean I'm awesome. I mean I ride in cars. So, I like Uber, it works, right? I get to an airport, I open up my phone, some person drives up in a clean car. That's the key phrase. Being the person who sat down next to Mike Poor in a cab where Mike sat in pee. And the cab driver, Mike's like, there's something wet back here. And the cab driver went, yeah, the guy before you peed. What? You didn't think to mention that? As we were, like, forget cleaning it up. <laughs> like just, just a heads up. Hey, there's piss on the seats. I don't know. <laughs> Shit, when my kids were little, they would tell you when they peed. The cabbie lost that skill. But, <laughs> so Uber has a bug bounty. Told you, full of tangents. Uber has a bug <laughs> So this guy, right? And he goes and he reports a, a vulnerability. He's like, hey, bad shit. I found an XSS in this website. And the Uber people came back and it's like, hey, you know, thanks for your report. Cool work, right? But we, we appreciate it. But we're afraid that that site isn't in scope for the bug bounty program. Okay? So we closed the, the bug. You know, hey, if you go out to this website, you know, you'll find. Here's his answer. And I'm going to read this. So please don't be offended. Well, be offended. Right? Uh, you fucking asshole motherfucker. I know this is, quote,
quote out of scope and your team member so-and-so marked it as informa informative and closed the report. Still, I didn't argue about it and accepted it, fucker. I respectfully ask you to disclose my report. You moron motherfucker deducted my reputation point. Bloody motherfucker taxi driver. I just got to ask. Taxi driver? <laughs> that's how you had to end it? <laughs> it's like, I, I, I just feel like that's too far off the cliff. <laughs> like, like, motherfucker, 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 taxi driver. <laughs> the next time I see somebody, I'm just going to yell at them, plumber! <laughs> That's, that's my new insult. You're a plumber. <laughs> I don't know why that's an insult, but I'm going to go with it. Right? This is what we see. Now, I'll tell you right now, this dude found a cross-site scripting flaw. That's cool. Not hard. <laughs> kind of cool. But it was out of scope. This is one of the things, and I, I recognize, I've had the argument. I've been the person arguing with the idea that we shouldn't limit scope as much as we do. Why? Because we want to get a true idea of how the attacker is viewing our systems. And if we say, that's out of scope, that's out of scope, that's out of scope, that's out of scope, unless we can prove that we have the same ability to tell that to the real hackers, then that's not good, right? And if you have that skill, sell that service. Like if you're able to tell the hackers don't hack that and they listen, you could be a trillionaire. Let's go back to that idea, right? But I get that argument. But the reality is that scopes are designed for a reason. And we may not agree with the reason, but we also may not know the reason. So like for example, the sites that were out of scope are actually not run by Uber. The reason they're out of scope is it's a different company. Uber doesn't have permission to allow people to test those systems, right? And my understanding is they are actually in scope for a different bug bounty. So there's a valid reason there not to allow people to test it. But some jackass decided, eh, rules don't affect me. And as long as we decide that rules don't affect us, we're going to continue to have this problem, right? We're going to continue to see attacks like this because companies like CC's Pizza aren't going to work with legitimate people because they're afraid of working with the idiots. And let's also be clear. You're hacking a company that sells all-you-can-eat pizza for $4? You, sir, are an asshole. That's almost as bad as hacking Goodwill. Their name is Goodwill. Why would you do that? I'm a badass hacker. No, you're an idiot. I like this one, right? Accused of hacking voter list. That was fun. 334 years in prison for hacking. Let's be clear, this is in Turkey. <laughs> I like that with gravy. But also, he wasn't arrested for hacking. He was arrested for identity theft because he opened accounts and cash checks and used credit cards of other people. He wasn't hacking. But because we've scared people with what we do, that's exactly, right? This is a bigger headline for people. This is the one they want, right? We see people like this, right? Uh, hackers from across the world will also be on the prowl trying to exploit the international event. So will pickpockets? Murderers, assassins, there's really assassins, right? This, I mean, why do we care? Why is that crime specifically called out? So the question is, what do we do? I don't know. How do we fix this? How do we make it so that we, as an industry, can continue to grow, continue to raise awareness, allow things like hacker bug bounties and training and awareness to keep going while not being jerks. I think one is, let's use correct labels. There's a difference between a researcher and a security tester, right? Most security researchers are really QA testers focused on security. Plain and simple. I'm not trying to be insulting. It's what it is. I'm a pen tester. Do you know what that means? I'm a QA person focused on security. There's not something fun here. There's not something fancy, expertise, right? I know to put a single quote in, and when I get the error message back, I know what to do with it. 
Unlike a QA tester who puts a single quote in, gets an error message that says, hey, the UI is broken. Right? That's the difference. It's the only difference. It's my focus, my viewpoint, what I'm looking at. And that's not bad. But let's use the right labels. The other thing is, let's start calling a spade a spade. You know, it's not hacking. It's theft. It's not hacking. It's fraud. If we started to use the real names for this, one, we wouldn't confuse people. Two, we'd get the police and the prosecutors to actually pay attention to the people who are breaking the law. Because I'll pick on Charlie Miller here for a second. Somebody I respect greatly, somebody I would actually call a security researcher, right? Charlie didn't steal anything from that car manufacturer. Charlie didn't defraud anybody with that car manufacturer. Charlie hacked the car. And because we call hacking the same thing as theft and scams and fraud, Charlie's stuff is associated with breaking and entering, fraud, theft, and scams. So let's stop doing that. Let's stop charging people with hacking. Let's start charging them with cyber theft or computer theft, or computer fraud, or whatever you want to call it, but let's call it what the crime is. And we can change that. And I know, years ago, somebody decided we had to stop using the word hacker, and we start using the word cracker, which is a native Floridian I was offended by. But that failed. The reason it failed is all we were trying to do was create a new term. We could have tried to change people from saying hacker to uh, bigly bobbly blues, right? It would have had the same effect because it's a made up word. What I'm saying is let's change the terminology to established, understandable terminology. If I say to somebody, they broke into my systems and stole data, nobody questions that was a crime. If I say they hacked in, I have to explain what that meant, right? And what we realize is if the longer we have to explain stuff, the harder it is for us to make sure that other people are paying attention, right? We ourselves need to do the right thing. We ourselves, and I'm not sitting up here going, everybody should be ethical. Because your ethics are different than mine. I know they are. I have an ethical code. I have things I won't do. I have things I would do. And that ethical code is probably different than yours and yours. For example, I've already said, somebody ever hurts my kids and I have an opportunity to mess them up, I'm probably going to take it. I, I'll admit that. I know this is being recorded. Later on in my trial, you'll see this video. <laughs> right? I worry about the first time my daughter comes home after somebody has broken up with her, and the stereotypical, right, crying in the bedroom because they've been broken up with, I don't know if that would really happen. But I do know this. When my daughter cries, I fix it. <laughs> right? Not always. We were having this conversation earlier. Brenna had a horse she wanted to get, and she fell in love with this horse, and she was trying the horse out and riding the horse, and she fell in love with the horse, and then we found out that the horse had a back problem that if Brenna had gained any weight, like five pounds, and since she was only 12, she was probably gonna gain five pounds at some point in her life, that she wouldn't be able to ride the horse because the horse would be in excruciating pain. and You just couldn't do it, and this is unfixable. So we were not able to buy the horse for my daughter, right? And I will tell you that up to that point, I had been absolutely against the idea of buying a horse for my daughter for various reasons I'm not gonna get into right now, but all good reasons, just I wasn't in on board. My daughter cried for six months. Randomly, she would start sobbing. And I looked at my wife, and I said, you broke her. <laughs> and I don't care how we fix it, fix it. If the horse is $100 million, we'll find the money. <laughs> Make her stop crying. <laughs> that's simple, right? Because that's what I want to do. So I know when we talk about ethics, I know that when Brenna, the love of my life, Sarah, the other love of my life. I look at them and they're amazing. And I believe I had part to do with building them. 
My wife says I did. The only proof we have is she was the mom. Right? It's, I'm just saying. They're great kids. They can't be related to me. Look at these genes. <laughs> but I want to fix it. So for us to do the right thing, we have to first improve. We have to improve ourselves. We have to do better. We have to work together. We have to communicate. We have to build something better than we have now. We actually have to have standards. And I put NIST and PCI, you know, the you must be this tall to ride the internet standard. PCI, the midgets of security. They love that slogan. <laughs> We have to standardize better. Because I will tell you right now that two of my guys just finished a HIPAA audit. They went in, they did an assessment of this organization based on HIPAA, and we delivered our report. And the company said to us, hey, last year another company did this and they gave us a spreadsheet. Can you, we, we want your report to be in the exact same spreadsheet they gave us before. That, that way we could compare. And we're like, uh, okay. I mean, are you allowed to give us the spreadsheet so we can to do that? Oh yeah, yeah, we got permission from the other company and they sent it over. And 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 the present the spreadsheet had the word HIPAA spelled H I P P A everywhere in the document. Every single place they had HIPAA, H I P P A. This was a security consulting firm specializing in HIPAA assessments and they misspelled it. Because we all know HIPAA has three P's. <laughs> we know it doesn't. <laughs> right? We see this stuff. I do a pen test. And if I may say so myself, I do a damn good job. And I give a report that says, here's what's wrong. Here's how you fix it. Here's what you do better. And the company says to me, hey, this doesn't look like the report we got last year. And they hand me a Nessus report with somebody's logo on it. My answer is, you got screwed last year. You didn't have a pen test. You had a vulnerability assessment. You paid too much for it. We need to standardize stuff. But we also have to build awareness of this. We need to work together. We need to communicate out how to make it better and easier to get into this field. I have people say to me all the time, I want to be a pen tester, what do I do? My answer is, buy a whole bunch of BICs. Click, 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 click. But, how do I do it? I have had multiple people say to me, well, Kevin, I think that the best way for me to become a pen tester, a security person, is to find vulnerabilities in public websites. Public websites with bug bounties? Oh, is that an option? <laughs> yes. Right? People think that they can just go hack something. I actually had somebody apply for a job with me. And their resume listed the web applications they had compromised. So I reached out to the person because I'm an idiot. And I said to them, hey, I'm a little uncomfortable with this resume because it seems like it's got your customers' names and the details of their vulnerabilities in it. And the guy said to me on the phone, customers? I don't have any customers. And that's when it hit me. This jackass had actually written a, we a resume of all the sites he had illegally compromised. And then mailed it to me. I'm like looking at it going, shit, do I have to call the FBI? Like what, I don't know what to do with this. But he thought that was a legitimate way to get experience to become a pen tester. Just to be clear, I didn't hire him. I want to make that clear because I can just see all the resumes I'm going to get next, right? Did I call the FBI? No. I still don't know what to do with it. I really don't. I, 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 one, I have no proof he actually did it, right? And I do know that at least two of the sites he says he compromised, other people have been arrested for compromising. So, I don't know. But, <laughs> it's a good question. It's a bad question because I don't have a good answer, <laughs> right? But we have to get better awareness. We have to share that awareness. We need to teach other people, 
right? We need to make the world better. We have to make our industry better. And I look at cons like GERCON, and I want to be clear, I love this con. I was here last year. I was supposed to be here the year before. I hope I'm here next year. I see goodness out there. But I also see some people who don't understand that what we do should be done for the right side. We should be building up everybody, not tearing down. That's just my opinion, and I'm an idiot. But I think I'm a fun idiot. <laughs> so, and I hit my time, so I need to say thank you very much, everybody, and I'll see you throughout the rest of the day.